Well, looks like I bought a boat. Oh, what have I done? Man, I have another bad idea that I'm gonna try to bring into the reality of this world. So I put a thing up on Facebook saying that I was in the business for a boat that does not run, that is not necessarily seaworthy, that does not need to have a title, but needs to be a dead rise of some sort. Pretty overwhelming response. I put that up less than an hour ago, and I have about four boats that are within half an hour to go look at. If somebody were to ask me, how many boats do you need? The answer would be all of them because I'm a collector. Things I base my life around things that are willing to support my habit. Unfortunately, in the past 30 years, being a waterman has become a far harder business than it ever used to be. Between regulation and pollution issues and rising cost of operation and the lack of help, it's become very, very hard. There's a lot of guys not even been able to sell their boats. And they've been just sitting in marinas or in yards, dying essentially. The boat that I'm going to look at right now, I know very well, owned by a buddy of mine. They got a new boat a couple years ago, and so this is their old boat. I mean, this boat was in rough shape when they were using it. I'm basically looking for an authentic crab boat. Does not need a motor. It needs to be cheap, 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 or free. It needs to be easy to transport and relatively local-ish huge part of my business these days is selling my own crabs directly to the customer. I have sold crabs to middlemen, wholesale markets, and restaurants for the first seven years of nine that I crabbed. And then I decided that I was going to buy a piece of property. Two years ago, I decided that I was going to change to selling direct to customer because everybody that I see that's still in the industry and that has done well has taken these steps to add to the business and cut out the middleman. I'm no different. I started selling my crabs directly to the customer and all I have is a bare lot. And I have been selling out of a refrigerated trailer for the past two years. And a lot of what my customers want is a little more of an experience when they come to the crab stand. I'd say 95% of my sales are all people that watch me online and they come, they wanna meet me, they wanna get some crabs, t-shirts and trinkets, but I really want not only have a little more permanent structure-ish at my crab stand, but I also want a little bit of a cooler experience, something that's unique and, and, and almost a little bit of a landmark. You may see where this is going, and I don't know if I can pull this off. I've never seen this done before. Wow, she's an even better shape than I remember. Goodness. I'll tell you one thing, I can smell it. it smells like barnacles. It smells like an old crab boat. The size of them barnacles on there. That is crazy. Wow, the roof is lower than I remember. So this is what we got. This is the double trouble and they worked out of this boat just up until two years ago, actually. Some of the things that I need, I mean, it's a, it's an old crab boat. There ain't much left of her. That's a nice cross valve right there, actually. That's probably the nicest thing in this whole boat. That's an old plywood, plywood and glass boat built by Kinnaman on Tillman Island. This is a very common crab boat. It's sort of perfect in a way. The house is a little rough. It's definitely leaking. It does have a lot of things going for it. It's free and it's close to home and it's got the look. I mean, it's a real crab boat. The ceiling needs replaced and uh, the house needs replaced, the cabin, and the roof needs replaced. So basically, you're gonna have to gut the thing. I'm not so sure there's much to build off of once you've got it. You know, I totally understand why they got that other boat to crab out of, because this one's, she's in tough shape. She needs some work for what I would want it to do, which is everything but float. I actually needed to do the opposite of floating. Not sinking, but not hold water. Floor honestly is solid, more solid than I was expecting it to be. And I don't need the motor. I just need the whole thing open, which I like. I mean, there's a lot of potential here. The issue is like down here in the bilge, wow, there's a piece of a fish still in there. I'm just not sure if the ribs and the stringers are gonna be together enough. I mean, she's not in the worst shape I've ever seen. It's close, but it ain't the worst. But look at that, that's some old school stuff there, buddy. That's a homemade heat exchanger, 350 Chevy, small block with a velvet drive behind it, and like an inch and a quarter shaft hole in the ceiling. We'll see what's down here. Keelson board, keel bolts still in there. Although I'd probably lose the keel. So this part that I'm standing on is called the gunnel, or the gun whale, I've heard it called both things and they're actually more solid than I was expecting. And it's a little delaminated there, but oh boy. 
I mean, I get it, you know, for the price of free, you can't ask for much, but sometimes I can't afford free. This is an interesting pot rack too. I kind of like it. I'm gonna get some measurements of the ceiling so I can figure out about how many square feet. I wanna be able to compare this boat against other boats because that could be the determining factor. Because I have a feeling that a lot of the boats I'm gonna look at probably are not in too much better shape. The old double trouble. About nine foot of the ceiling, nine by 23. That is one of the big benefits of a Kinnaman is that they have a lot of square footage for the size of the boat. So this boat is 38 feet overall. Old man after my own heart here. That's one nice hammer. Definitely usable. Look at that, she still spins. The upside, it's free. Other upside, it's a real actual crab boat. It's a Kinnaman. It's got the square footage inside that I'm looking for. The other benefit is that the keel is about to fall off. So that saves me the trouble of cutting it off. I would say the downsides, it basically needs gutted and the house cut off, a new ceiling put in, a new house, and a new roof. Really a shame that this boat <laughs> likely will never see water again. It's probably going to get cut up from here and burned, but there's a possibility I could save it. Honestly, the fact that this boat has made it as long as it has into the 21st century is incredible. This boat's probably built in the 70s or the 80s, and these boats are built to be cheap workhorses. If a boat like this was only designed to have a working life of about 15 to 20 years. She's definitely had her day and I'm not writing it off yet. So this boat number one, double trouble. We're hitting the road again. The one boat that I'm gonna go look at, a thousand bucks. It is floating, it does not have a motor or a gear, but it does have some advantages. So I'm here in boat number two and I like it. I actually think this boat has real potential. It's a Delta built, built wood planked Virginia boat. It ain't perfect, but the house is together. It's not leaking too bad. I mean, it's all things can be fixed. It's got windows, rope windows in it, and it's vintage. It's a really cool. It's got the look. It's, it's beautiful. Needs a coat of paint bad. This boat has really good bones. This might be just what I'm looking for. This is inside the cabin in, in the house here. This is, I mean, look at that. That's a vintage chair, man. That is honestly so cool. Helm, I wonder if it's hydraulic steering. Wow, that's incredible. I can't believe it actually has a hydraulic helm in it. That is wild. It's definitely got some, I mean, this is straight mud up here in the in the bow on the keelson board, but it needs cleaning. It's definitely been sitting, but look at this. I mean, these are planks, probably original to when this boat was built. I would be willing to bet this boat was built in the 40s or the 50s. The floor needs replaced, but that's fine. I'm counting on that anyway. The collar boards are solid enough. Washboards. Must have a hole in it. Or that was for a winder. I mean, this boat really, really is neat. It's about the most traditional dead rise you could ever get. We'll see what she's got for power in here. Whew. It's an old Detroit. The benefit of having a Detroit in a boat means that the boat is liable to be pretty much pickled underneath of it. <laughs> so she'll probably last forever. It's even got a set of Cobalt controls. Look at these. It's just missing the hatch. That's a really nice set of controls there. She's in fair shape. She's definitely leaking, but that's not gonna be a problem for much longer. So again, a big part of what I'm after is square footage here. So I'm gonna get some measurements. We're gonna compare those to the other boats. We'll see what we got. So it's about 23 foot of floor by 11 foot of floor, which is actually a lot more than I was expecting it to be. If I was looking for a boat to actually go crab in, probably not my first choice, just because it needs some work. But for what I need it for, does not necessarily need to be seaworthy. It just needs to kind of look the part and have some structural integrity. It might be leading the race. It's definitely my favorite so far. Another advantage is that this boat has a glass top side. It's not just exposed wood, it's not rotten. It's glassed on what we call the collar boards, which are the boards that come down off the house. The wash boards here are all glass. It's top of the gunnels look like they've been replaced and glassed over, which is huge. That's a lot of material and a lot of time it would take to do that myself. And it will hold a roof. That's because I definitely need a roof on this boat. Sometimes it's really hard to look past the surface of something like this it looks like a raggedy piece of crap. You gotta be able to look past that and see that it has good bones. Although that same mentality has gotten me in trouble in the past. I 
I've definitely bought some things that I shouldn't have. So I just got off the phone with the owner of this boat. He said that this boat was working last year. Oyster. I actually believe it. On to the next one. This ain't an Eastern Shore scene. I don't know what is. Right, dog? I'm at the marina in Baltimore or in Essex. And that is the third boat. My goodness. Wow, this is more of a charter boat here. But, I mean, it's a beautiful piece of craftsmanship. Look at that. You can also see daylight through the floor. It is a pretty boat. Wow. Look at that flare on there. That is a beautiful boat. It's absolutely gorgeous, but that is some work right there. I mean, it is pretty. Pretty freaking big. The running gear is nice. It's got a nice skag on it. it. Might just be too big for what I need. This one does have a really nice motor that does come with the boat and a gear, which is worth something. May play into my decision. This boat definitely needs a lot more bright work in a weird way than I even think the other one does. It's hard to say. I think that I have made a decision, which junk boat I like the most, to turn into a crab store. I'm headed over to my lot where I sell the crabs right now to take some measurements and try to get a little bit of a layout plan to uh, make sure the boat's gonna actually fit before I call the man and tell him I wanna buy it. Ooh, we also have some really cool stuff coming up. You guys have been wanting merch. We did some merch and it worked out really well. Well enough that we're liable to really take that level of the business to the next level here. So we are here at my lot at 7333 East Furnace Branch Road. This is where I sell all my crabs directly to the customer after I catch them. And this is where I'm gonna be putting the boat. The boat is 36 feet by like, we'll say 12 feet wide. But basically the lot is this big curb cut and then this big gravel pad. It goes all the way back to there. I'm gonna try to find a place to put the boat that is visible from the road so people can see it but also gives enough room to drive past it, parking and all that kind of stuff. So I have all this land to work with here. And I originally wanted to stick it straight out, but I think that it's gonna be too long. Now I'm wondering if I can angle it this way. So it has a good road presence, but it also gives us a lot of driveway space. I wanna try a couple different setups here. So I got my tapes. I'm gonna walk out, put that cone, and just see how far 36 feet this way is. So it turns out 36 feet is freaking huge. Don't think that's gonna work. We're gonna have to orientate it a different way, because that is not enough room to drive around here. People will be in the ditch, I promise. I think I like this positioning better. So it'll kind of be like that. Bow stick out, you'll be able to see it. Then entrance here, put the fridge truck here. And all this is parking, leaves plenty of room for people to get in and out. I think that it's time to call the man, try to make a deal for this boat. Oh man, what am I getting myself into? Boy, this isn't a typical Luke move here. All right, we are gonna call the man with the boat. Call JB here. Seriously, voice big build up for nothing. Hopefully he calls me back. <laughs> that or that's my sign to not do what I'm about to do. You know me, I like to I just avoid red flags in general. All the more reason to do it in my book. So I may be speaking a little too soon here, but there's some reasons that I want that boat and not other boats. So the first boat we looked at was the Double Trouble. The biggest advantage of the Double Trouble is that it's free, but it needs everything. It needs a ceiling, it needs a new roof, some work around the gunnels, it needs collar boards, it needs a whole cabin. Totally would work, it's a Kinnaman. It could be churched up a little bit. It just needs everything. The giant charter boat that was up in Baltimore, beautiful boat, it's got the lines that I like, but that boat is more of a charter boat than a crab boat. But that's a really, really big boat. The charter boat was about $2,000, and he said that if he pulled the motor and the gear and everything, he'd sell me the boat for $800, which is still a little more than I'd like to spend on that boat. I mean, it needs work on the gunnels, it needs work on the cabin, it needs work on everything. And, you know, for 800 bucks, uh, I still gotta get the thing home, trucked home, and blocked, and, you know, you'll have a little money in there. So the Deltaville boat, that boat, has some very classic lines to it. That is a classic Deltaville, Virginia built, true dead rise, which means it's planked. They start with the keelson and then they plank off of that to the chines 
and it's just classic looking. It's beautiful. Honestly, I almost feel bad using that boat not in the water. In order to be seaworthy, needs to be what they call re-nailed. That means a lot of the fasteners in that boat are starting to come loose, and so it's starting to leak pretty badly. It's not likely to be put back to work. It would take an extraordinary amount of work to make that boat truly seaworthy and able. But for what I need it for, it looks like it's gonna be perfect. It has the look, it's got the lines, it's beautiful. Pull it out, power wash it, coat of paint, a little sanding, a coat of paint, put a sealant in it, cut the side out of it, put a roof on it. It's gonna be about the right size. It is $1,000 that he wants for his boat, and that's when he takes the motor, everything in the boat, out. But I think I might be able to get a little bit of a better deal. It's gonna need so much work. That boat, I think, out of all of them, has the best things going for it. All right, he's calling back. Hello? Mr. How you doing? Jason Baker, how you doing, buddy? Not too bad. Were you out oystering today? Yeah, we got it done. It was blowing on us, but we got it done. We caught it of it. Were you dredging or hand tonging? We're hand tonging. Has it been all right? Yeah. Have the oysters been there this year? I know there was a lot last yeah, we, year. We, yeah, we've been catching them. We've been catching our limit every day. Good. Tell me, what were you talking about with the boat? What were you thinking? Well, I went down and looked at it. It looks like something yeah. might work. Where were you at on price? Where, and were you were you trying to keep the motor and the gear and everything else it looked like it had a nice steering helm in it some nice lines and a you uh, know gear and all that stuff i've got a couple projects going on i did get both of the helms I'm, and i was going to pull the motor out of it you know which has got some value to me i wanted to cut you a deal for a thousand bucks if you've got to make me a little bit of a counter offer i'm not going to be too um objective to being to work with you some because i just i'm tired of babysitting it's awesome it really is a nice boat but it needs obviously needs painted and whatever else but looks like there might be a couple boards coming loose or something in the stern there it looks like it's leaking a little bit from the stern she needs to be renailed the boat hasn't been hauled up for a while is what it is yeah it don't look like it um yeah. but it might be perfect for what i need will you take 600 bucks for it how about 700 i'll make the deal i'll shake your hand 700 bucks yep yep all right all right 700 bucks that's cool all right we'll do it it's got a title and all that got the coast guard papers and all to come with it yes sir gotcha i always forget to ask that until after i make a deal it's bit me in the ass before i get excited you know i wouldn't have made it with you if i couldn't back it up it's all good you know i don't need the thing like today but maybe a couple weeks or you know a week or two or something like that it's probably going to be within this next week all right sounds good yeah i'd like to get it relatively soon i got a little bit of work ahead of me now i should be able to tow it tow it you know in the water right you said it's got a pump on it that works all right yeah, it's got a pump and all that works on it. Yeah. All right, I'll bring a crash pump or something just in case. It's liable to be a little bit of an adventure getting her home. But, you know, I'll keep an eye on the weather and whatever next week. And, you know, maybe I'll find a day we can, uh, you know, I can come over and pick it up and, yeah. and drag her home. Sounds good. I'll have that motor out this week, I'm pretty sure. So. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Okay, all right, see ya. Yep, yeah, Call ended. Well, looks like I bought a boat. <sighs> That's the easy part. Now we got to get it home which means i have to go from the bodkin to ken island in one of my boats either the southern girl or the weebo probably the weebo if i haven't sold it by then we got to pick up this boat got to tow it from ken island home to pasadena without it sinking and then you got to tie it up and we got to get it hauled up and then put on blocks at the marina then the work starts and then we got to get it here i don't know what i just got myself into the fact that the man that's selling you the boat tells you to bring an extra battery and a, maybe a crash pump, that's always a good sign. It makes you feel real good about the boat you just bought. <laughs> We're going to be selling crabs out of a 1970 Deltaville, Virginia built boat. That's going to be the only crab stand that's built out of a true Virginia dead rise. I'm excited about it. I'm super pumped about it. I hope you guys are uh, excited too. If you haven't already, like and subscribe and do all that kind of stuff if you don't mind because uh this project's liable to cost me a lot more money than i think it's going to oh what have i done